And hello everyone, welcome back to Good Game Empire, I'm Brior. And even though I said that out of order, let's get going anyways, as today's video is going to be about another of the camp building events. Today on the table is the Thorn King, which rotates around with its counterparts, the Underworld and the Blade Coast, to appear every couple of months. When it does appear, I definitely recommend that you jump in and start doing it, as there are some interesting rewards that we will take a look at here in a second. Uh, but the general idea is that you start off with the camp on this side of the map, uh, which we'll visit in a second, and you crusade across the map, defeating towers, uh, eventually to get to the end fortress. Now if you defeat the end fortress, you get the main reward for the event, which is the throne of the necromancer. It yields 208 public order, and it looks pretty nice, but I would argue that it is now obsolete. Uh, the Fountain of Inner Peace, which was introduced by the Samurai Invasion, yields 220 public order, uh, more power points, and is far easier to achieve, uh, so I'd really recommend that you focus on that and not the Throne of the Necromancer. That being said, there are other interesting rewards uh, that you can ob obtain from this event, so it still is a good thing to investigate. Let's go ahead and take a look at those rewards by visiting my castle in green. Uh, the rewards are positioned right outside of the castle in a event tent called the Thorn King. Makes sense, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and run down through all of these tiles very quickly uh, to talk about all of the rewards, starting with the coins tile. Uh, now this is not a good purchase. If you want coins, you should be looting other NPCs. Uh, certainly, there are more efficient ways to get coins. Uh, next, the Maiden of the Thorns is a 3x3 three three decorative item that yields, I believe, 22 public order. Uh, now I'm actually purchasing a couple of these you see up here to replace my market stalls. I think this will help me out just a bit, uh, but certainly not too helpful, and uh, if you don't have a use for those, uh, then you will certainly know that. High-level players will be more interested in picking up one of these, or perhaps the Throne of the Necromancer if they aren't interested in getting the Fountain of Inner Peace. Next is this Haunted Tree, and to be honest, I don't know how useful this one is. It depends on what footprint it has. I believe this would have to be a 4x4, or maybe even a 5x5, five five. Uh, but if it wasn't, if it was the same size as this one right here, then it would definitely be worth it. Again, I don't think that's the case. Maybe I'll do some investigation later. Uh, moving down now to the Demon Slayer and the Assassin. Now these are uh, very strong troops that have a uh, very high travel speed. This means that they will cross the map quickly, and it also means that they are great for catching other players, other players uh, unguarded with their attackers. However, if you aren't a high-level player, you probably won't have much use for these guys, and I recommend that you focus more on the unique equipment. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, starting with the Castellan set that is on offer from this event. It's called the Dead Man's Armor, and I do not have the full stats for the set, but I believe it would be about average. Uh, as this event was introduced a very long time ago, uh, what was good back then won't necessarily be great now. That being said, I do recommend that you work towards this set if you complete the set that I am about to show you from this event. Let's go ahead and move down the line to these two pieces here, the Thorn Armor and the Soul Catcher. Together they make the Armor of the Necromancer, a two-piece set that will give you a plus 40% combat strength bonus to your ranged attackers uh, just in having the set completed. Uh, the two pieces of the set also offer some interesting bonuses, such as plus melee soldiers combat strength, travel speed, moat, and let's take a look at the soul catcher to get the others, uh, melee, detection, and wall. Uh, so I believe that this two-piece set would be a great addition to your equipment storage, and maybe if you combined it with two other good pieces, more focused on, uh, I guess, speed and wall, uh, then you would potentially come out with an interesting 90-90 setup. So I will actually be working towards these two pieces here, and if I'm able to obtain them this time uh, during the event, then I will certainly make a video on that. Finally, below we have the Death's Grin, which is part of another two-piece set, this one between uh, this item here and the Sea Queen Scepter, which is obtainable from the Blade Coast. Now this set is not as interesting for me, because look at the set bonus. It is a reduction of cooldown time. 
Uh, now, while this may be helpful for some, in some small ways, it certainly isn't as interesting as plus 40% melee or plus 40% ranged. Uh, and those stats come from the two-piece set from Blade and the two-piece set that we just looked at here from the Thorn King. So again, well, I believe the, the Sea Queen Scepter is a very interesting piece, potentially with ranged and melee. This set here doesn't provide enough bonus for this to be worth it. Anyways, let's head back up to uh, the top of this second column here. And this here is the column that shows the rewards that you can get from the Thorn Talismans. You don't have to worry about those until later in the event when you will be picking them up. Uh, so I'm going to glaze over this for the moment, as this is simply an introduction video to the event, not an advanced analysis. Uh, that being said, these two pieces here will complete your Dead Man's Armor Castellan set that we just looked at, so please note that if you are trying to get that set, you will need to do very well in the event to pick up these two pieces as well. Finally, uh, here we have some random gems that you can buy. Uh, perhaps if you are a very strong player and you have excelled at this event, then you would be interested in these. But if that were the case, uh, maybe I would convert my talismans back into normal talismans down here, these thorn back into normal, to pick up demon slayers and assassins. I don't know, that would be up to you. Uh, that being said, let's go back into the event and take a look at the camp. As well, it's helpful to know what rewards we can get. It's even better to know how we can get them. Uh, so this camp here is what you will be building throughout the event, and there are three major types of things to construct. Let's start with the supply storehouse. Now this works in a way similarly to the storehouse in the kingdoms. However, you need to build multiple of them, and they each control how many resources you store. They each upgrade it by, let's see if it says, I believe about 7,000 apiece. 7,500 uh, apiece. Uh, that's for wood, stone, and food, not just one. Uh, so that being said, you do not produce wood and stone in this event, which means you need to transfer your resources in in order to keep up with construction. You do uh, loot a few resources from attacking the towers and the resource villages, which we will get to in a second, but again, you will need to port resources in to keep up with your construction, especially at the start of the event. That means that you do not have to have a storage capacity of 81,000, you rather need to have a storage capacity of about 33,000 uh, because when you ship resources in from fire or ice or sands or wherever, uh, some resources will be lost during transit. A shipment of 81,000 resources will be whittled down to 24,000 by the time it gets to this event. So again, this is plenty of room for me, and I think it will be plenty of room for you as well. Taking a look at food now, you can see that we do produce a little bit, but you will probably be need to cart... Uh, you'll probably need to be carting in food as well to this event. Uh, now let's move on to these small tents here, which dictate how many soldiers you can store. Uh, right now my storage capacity is being exceeded by the number of troops I actually have, and how I'm doing, the, how I'm doing that is as follows. I am completing the quests, and many of the quests give out rewards of troops. Let me see if I can find one that does just that. Here it is. Uh, in completing this quest, you would get uh, approximately 90, actually exactly 90 troops, and they will be added to your total troops in this kingdom regardless of what your soldier capacity is. So that's very nice, and it could be a shortcut for you in terms of defeating uh, these towers and conquering the event uh, in which you do not have to build uh, a whole lot of small tents. That being said, if you starve your troops for whatever reason, uh, probably by accident, which is easier uh, to do than you might think, as this event doesn't pop up in your castle list, which is normally over here, or does it? Uh, it could well, uh, but it doesn't at least pop up in your barracks and your hospital lists because you cannot build a barracks and a hospital here, so it's easier to miss than you might think. Uh, but again, upgrading tents will increase your soldier capacity and it will reduce your morale. Morale is what determines how strong your troops in this event are, and it's controlled primarily by the drill grounds. Uh, there are other buildings that you can construct to improve your morale, but I really recommend that you go with the drill grounds because they are built using resources and they will take up less space than the banners. As you can see, I have built many, many drill grounds and I used skips to do so. Uh, let's go ahead and walk you through the process of building another. It really couldn't be easier. You come over to decorative items here, you grab the drill ground, you drag it over to the spot, and you plop it down. Uh, then if you are so inclined, you could use a skip to do uh, to complete the construction of this drill ground, but I'm not going to do that today as I have run out of uh, one hour 
uh, 30 minute and 10 minute skips so that's not a very good place to be in uh, anyways that covers the construction for this event I would recommend that you bring your morale up to about 180 percent before you start hammering on the towers uh, but that's what we're gonna do now we're gonna start hammering on the towers so in order to do that let's return to the world map and it looks a little bit different than the world map for green that's for sure once again you start at this end and you run across the map liberating territories the territories I have liberated in this event so far are the ones that have green grass and the ones that I'll be working on in the future are the ones that have gray muddy grass or maybe not even grass at all again if you get to the end here to the necromancer's castle you will win the event and collect the reward uh, so let's talk about the things that you need to do in order to attack the towers well first you need to get to them uh, I can't attack this tower here uh, because I haven't gotten to it yet I need to clear out this tower or this tower and probably uh, actually it doesn't look like there's a bridge there so I might be okay uh, but if there was a bridge there then I need to repair it using resources you can repair bridges by clicking on them and donating resources I don't believe I have enough stone at the moment so I won't be doing that uh, but I will be repairing this bridge here and showing you guys how to attack towers by clicking on this one and launching an attack but first let's take a look at a resource village as believe it or not resource villages are even more important than towers in this event uh, ideally you would definitely get to the end of the map uh, but perhaps only to unlock the higher level resource villages the resource villages are what you will be using to collect talismans for the rewards that we just looked at let's go ahead and attack a level one resource village uh, no risk in doing so probably not too exciting either but if you keep up on hitting these smaller resource villages uh, the numbers do add up over time and you will probably be put in a pretty good position I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with more troops than are necessary for the sole purpose of making sure that I can collect all of the resources and bring them all home and now that I've done so let's go ahead and launch this attack uh, actually let me do this because there are two defenders here on the front uh, I will be using ladders to reduce the castle wall protection to 0% 40 matches 40 up here because there's only one troop over here I won't need to do that I won't be taking any casualties on this attack as you've noticed just then the travel time to this resource village is really quite short and that is why I'm doing it first the travel time to the towers especially as you proceed across the map uh, increases and it becomes very long that being said let's repair this bridge and take a look at what troops are inside the tower I'm about to attack once again we donate resources for the reparation process and it is completed instantly so that is very nice completing uh, bridge uh, re reparations is part of a quest line that you can get rubies for so that's not too important but it will show you uh, how far along in the event that you are and it could potentially unlock future quests so you might as well keep up on it uh, so the reason that I attack towers uh, as I go across uh, both towers is because I am interested in unlocking more resource villages and really just completing the event and more so completing the quests that will give me uh, additional Kingsguard troops so that way I don't have to build more camps and I still have troops to attack with uh, so some players don't do that however they attack only across the top or only across the bottom in this event it might be more advantageous to attack across the top if you are looking to get this reward and we'll take a look at that in another video this is very interesting indeed it is the cow uh, sort of a reference maybe to Diablo I don't know uh, but it gives you a very special item so once again I will be taking a look at that in another video please stay tuned on the channel so it looks like our attack on that resource village has finally completed let's open it up and as I predicted zero losses uh, on my side three on his side and one talisman collected uh, the bigger deal there is the resources if you keep up in attacking your level one resource villages you will be able to use the resources you collect for defeating uh, sorry for crossing bridges for re for repairing bridges so now let's go ahead and click on this tower I have not looked at that before uh, as you saw I just repaired the bridge and before that I couldn't see the spy report uh, so really I'm coming in blind that being said it looks like we will be able to take on this target fairly easily uh, starting with filling in tools on the flanks the flanks appear to be a better choice to me uh, on this attack just because I don't want to excuse me use ruby tools to reduce the ranged combat strength and uh, there aren't enough slots for me to reduce gate wall and ranged all in one go 
So let's go ahead and load up with some ranged attackers. It looks like we will have uh, almost enough to use demons exclusively on this first wave, but that is not the case. No worries, we will continue just filling in uh, the subsequent waves with ranged and melee uh, to face these troops here, which will be moving back to the courtyard. There are no defenders in the courtyard already, so that is a good thing. Uh, it looks like our attack now is full, but just kidding, we missed out on this second wave. Uh, now we have dumped all of the troops that we have in this event into the attack, and we can go ahead and launch it. Uh, so now, as you saw, that is quite the lengthy travel time. So uh, unless I have anything else to say, which I don't think I do, I will be cutting the video and coming back to this when the attack has landed. All right, guys, see you then. And all right, guys, it's been about 20 minutes. So here I am with the attack about to land. Uh, it's tough to make a prediction on this one. Even though I said it was going to be a relatively easy attack, I do think I will be taking uh, more losses on this attack than I will uh, than I have already taken on other targets, even as part of this event. Uh, that being said, I am interested to see the results, and it looks like just a few seconds to go. Uh, but one thing I did want to point out for this event was that there are no commanders uh, in the event, no Castellans in the event, so equipment is... Uh, completely to be disregarded here. Uh, that means that it's pretty easy for uh, lower level players to defeat this event. Transferring resources to the kingdom is tough, but if you are able to pick up some Kingsguard or some demons as a reward for doing whatever and porting them into this kingdom sounds okay to you, then you could definitely crusade across the map and get yourself some interesting pieces of armor. Without any more delay, let's take a look at the battle report. I did lose 11 soldiers, which is more than usual. Uh, I believe those would be on the flanks. Actually, no, a couple casualties in the courtyard as well. Uh, so that's pretty interesting to me, but that is okay. Uh, we did pick up some more talismans, and we did get some uh, excellent losses here and some resources and coins as well. So defeating the event, that's what it's all about. Uh, so it looks like we have defeated this tower here. We are well on our way to uh, going even further. Uh, next target will be this one. Uh, these towers, uh, the two towers here, uh, fortresses even, uh, are a little bit tougher to defeat than these uh, regular uh, targets, but I'll see how I can do. Uh, all right, guys, thank you very much for watching. It looks like I will have three more videos to make about the Thorn King event. One here on the Cow King. Uh, that will be pretty fun and interesting. Maybe that will be my April 1st video, uh, so stay tuned for that. One about defeating this fortress. Let me get that quest notification out of the way for you. And another about picking up the rewards, uh, these uh, pieces of equipment that I mentioned, and making an interesting set out of those. So thank you again very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and have a great day. If you're interested in watching more of my videos, thank you very much. You can click on one of the links on the screen before you. Uh, the one on the left will be to a video about the Cow King when it comes out. I will hopefully remember to put the annotation there. Uh, so if you're watching this in the distant future, that will be available for you. The one on the right will be about the Blade Coast. Uh, similar topic, uh, just different appearance and a different theme. So if you didn't feel like you got all of the information you needed from this video, 